ki tosi maharani bhakti devi ki hari nam sankirtan ki all glories to assembled devotees all glories to assembled devotees all glories to assembled devotees all glories to shri guru shri goranga all glories to the prabhupad nama om vishnu padaya krishna pristaya bhutale shrimati bhakti vedanta swamin iti namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today I've been asked to speak about the Rathiyatra because today is Rathiyatra day So Rathiyatra has been celebrated for many centuries in Jagannath Puri. We read Shankaracharya, he wrote the Jagannath Astikam, glorifying Lord Jagannath and the Rathiyatra and the worship of Lord Jagannath. So Shankaracharya appeared in this world about 1200 years ago. Ramanuja Acharya, of course, he also went to Jagannath Puri and he wanted to modify the process of worship, but Lord Jagannath didn't want it and Lord Jagannath moved Ramanuja out of Jagannath Puri and put him in Kurmakshetra. And so he got busy in Kurmakshetra and did some, made a nice temple there for the Lord. Anyway, you can understand the worship of Lord Jagannath has a very long tradition. And 500 years ago, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was residing there. And, well, he took sannyas at the age of 24 and he remained in this world for another 24 years. Six of the years were spent traveling around India and 18 years were spent residing in Jagannath Puri. So every year he would take part in the Rathiyatra festival. Prior to Rathiyatra, we have the Snanyatra some two weeks before. And after the Snanyatra, which is considered to be like the, the appearance day of Lord Jagannath, after the Snanyatra, the Lord goes into seclusion and there is no darshan of the Lord for two weeks. During that time Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would also leave Jagannath Puri and he would go to Al Alana and worship the deity there. But after the two weeks he would come back. He would come back in time to take part in the Gundicha Marjanam festival which was celebrated yesterday the cleansing of the temple of Gundicha and also the cleansing of our heart to remove all the anartas from our heart so that we can become qualified of actually seeing Lord Jagannath. So today is the day Lord Jagannath uh, uh, comes out of seclusion and there's a ceremony where he is placed on his chariot along with Lord Balaram and Subhadra Maharani. They each have their own chariot in Jagannath Puri. And uh, there's a nice Pandava Vijay festival which takes place putting them on the chariot. The deities are taken care of by the Dayatas. The Dayatas are from the Sab Sabara race meaning they take care of pigs. So people who take care of pigs are usually not considered 
very high class, but these people, these sabara, Sabaras are very dear to Lord Jagannath and they took a lot of care of Lord Jagannath. So during the time of Lord Jagannath's seclusion for two weeks, at that time the dietas are the only ones who are able to see him and serve him and they bring different fruit juices and medicinal herbs for him. And then they're the ones to carry the deities out and place them on the chariot. So they have to be quite strong to do that because Lord Jagannath is big and heavy. So these dietas, they are given this nice task, nice service to do, to bring the Lord out and place him up on the chariot. When Lord Chaitanya would take part in the Rathiyatra festival, he would organize it very carefully. He would organize the kirtan parties. There would be groups of kirtan. There would be groups of people and there would be, in each group there would be a, a singer and sometimes two singers and then there would be also a main dancer and there would be two madangas played in each group. So usually there would be seven groups taking part in the kirtan. There would be four groups in front, one group on either side and one group behind the chariot of Lord Jagannath. So in this way there would be 14 madangas being played and heavy kirtan. Lord Chaitanya would organize the leader of, the, he had four parties of his own and he had Lord Nityananda lead one party and he had, uh, he had uh, Govinda lead lead another, no, it was Srivas Pandit leading another and then there was also another party led by uh, oh I forget the names now anyway there would be four parties of Lord Chaitanya and then there would be parties from the different provinces around Mayapur, Shantipur would send a party Advaita Acharya would be in that party and then there would be a party from Kanda. They would also have many devotees, people like Raghunandan and Narahari would be chanting in that. And this way they would make very, very nice kirtan. And Lord Chaitanya, he would also participate. He would dance. And Lord Chaitanya, by his potency by his internal potency he could manifest himself in each of the seven kirtan parties at the same time just like lord krishna during rasa lila he would each of the gopis would think krishna is dancing with me in the same way during the rathiatra festival each of the kirtan parties thought Lord Chaitanya is dancing in our kirtan party. Lord Chaitanya was appearing there in each of the kirtan parties simultaneously. And then Lord Chaitanya would want to dance and he would like to dance and jump very high. And he would jump very high and sometimes he would crash to the ground. So all the people who were attending Rathiyatra, any of you who have been to Rathiyatra, you know there's always many, many lakhs of people, hundreds of thousands of people. So when they saw Lord Chaitanya in his sannyasi robes dancing in such ecstasy, they all wanted to take the dust from his feet. So they had to have three rings surrounding him so that nobody could touch him 
the inner ring was Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda, he's none different from Lord Balaram. So he's very strong and powerful and he could make a nice strong circle around Lord Chaitanya. And then there would be another circle where Govinda and Kashishwara were organizing the people to protect Lord Chaitanya. And then there would be a third circle where Maharaj Prataparudra had his men and different soldiers and officers from his palace. They were in the third circle. So in this way nobody could get, not easy to get near to Lord Chaitanya. They did this just to make sure Lord Chaitanya did not get disturbed by all the people. So, Ratiatra festival was of course very dear to our own Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada, as a young child, he would perform Ratiatra. His father arranged for him somehow they were able to get a little chariot and they made it very similar to the Rathiatra in Puri. They even had a horse put on the front just like on the chariots at Puri. They have these horses on the front to pull the chariot and so Prabhupada also had a toy horse put on the front of his chariot and they invited all the neighborhood to come and take part. So Srila Prabhupada grew up and as a young man he was always thinking about going to Jagannath Puri or to Vrindavan. And regularly he would check on the timetable to see the times of the trains, what train would be convenient and he would check the fare. It says at that time when Prabhupada was thinking when he was a young man that means like uh, 1910, 1920 at that time the fare and the train to Vrindavan was four or five rupees. Now it's four or five hundred rupees. <laughs> so you can just imagine the value of a rupee. Anyway, Prabhupada was planning like that and then he went to college, he studied, then he did his final exams and after his final exams he decided, you know, take a break from the pressure of the exams and he went, he took a train ride to Jagannath Puri. So it was his first visit to Jagannath Puri just after his college exams. It was not the time of Ratiatra. It was just an ordinary weekend, ordinary time of the year. And there were some tourists there, not too busy. And Srila Prabhupada would walk around and see the different places. He would go to see Lord Jagannath, of course. And he would go and see Tota Gopinath and the other temples. And Prabhupada had some introduction from his father. His father had some friend there and his father had written a letter of introduction for Prabhupada to give to his friend. So Prabhupada went and he met the man and the man invited Prabhupada that you come take your lunch with me. But when they were going to take the lunch, Srila Prabhupada looked at the dishes which were prepared and he saw some pieces within the preparations. So he said to the man, what is this? And the man said, this is meat. And so Prabhupada was shocked that, oh. Then he told the man that, I'm sorry, I don't eat meat. I'm a vegetarian. All our family, our whole life, we're vegetarian. And the man said, oh, I'm very sorry. I thought meat was very good. I thought it was, I thought it would be pleasing to you. But Prabhupada told the man, no, I'm sorry, I won't take any food here. So Prabhupada stayed in Puri three or four days. Every, all the time he just took 
Jagannath Puri Prasada, the Mahaprasad from the temple. And Prabhupada saw the pandas there, he saw, he recognized some of the different priests from the temple. He saw them come out on the beach where he would be walking and he could see that they were smoking beedis. And he saw also how they all, very common, they eat fish. People in Puri, practically everybody eats fish because it's on the coast, it's very commonly available. So Prabhupada was not very impressed with the standards. Anyway, that's a special standard for Lord Jagannath. Lord Jagannath accepts the worship of these people at Puri. But Prabhupada had different ideas, different standards. And then later on, when he went to the West, we see he had a, first they had the temple in New York. Prabhupada didn't put any deity. Then they went to San Francisco, second place Prabhupada visited after being in New York. He went to San Francisco and it was there that Mother Malati came across some dolls in an Indian import store and when she brought it and showed it to Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada offered obeisances to them and told her this is the form of Lord Jagannath. So then Srila Prabhupada said this is very special, this is a special sign from Lord Krishna. When the Lord appears like that, it's a special sign that he wants to be worshipped by the devotees. So Srila Prabhupada found out that one of his disciples, Shamsundar Prabhu, knew how to do sculpture. So he had him carve the deities of Jagannath, Baladev and Subhadra. And Shamsundar Prabhu was a very new devotee and we're told at that time he was still smoking cigarettes. And then one day Prabhupada came there to see how the carving was going on and he picked up a packet of cigarettes. It was sitting on the head of Lord Jagannath, the deity which was going to be Lord Jagannath. He placed his packet of cigarettes on the head and Prabhupada picked it up and he said, what is this? And so Shamsundar confessed, he said, well, I'm still smoking cigarettes. So Prabhupada preached to him and told him, don't let a little thing like this come between you and Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada told him, every day you smoke one less and this way you give up smoking. So Shamsundar did it. He had faith in the message of Srila Prabhupada and he followed. Anyway, Prabhupada picked Lord Jagannath to be installed there in the temple in San Francisco. He said, Lord Jagannath is very merciful. He will be very kind to the devotees there. And pro they, they had no Arctic paraphernalia and they would simply offer a candle. So everyone would come and they would offer a candle. And they had one big candle, everyone would offer the same candle. And they would all have an opportunity to offer the candle to Lord Jagannath. So this was the beginning of deity worship and the worship of Lord Jagannath. And then Prabhupada also after some time he explained to them that they could also perform Rati Atra. And they organized some nice Rati Atra festival. And Prabhupada was very pleased and he saw how Western people, they all like to come for the Rati Atra. In the San Francisco the festival was held in the Golden Gate Park which is a big park along the sea. So the Pacific Ocean is there, big sea breeze, and devotees could have very nice 
festivals of Rati Atra there. I was telling how Lord Chaitanya organized the Rati Atra with the different kirtans. So similarly, when we had Rati Atra in New York, the first Rati Atra in New York was in 1976 and Prabhupada was there and it was down 5th Avenue. So Prabhupada was very pleased that they'd been able to organize the Rathi Atra festival there in New York City. And he knew it not very easy to get permission to do something like that in New York. There was even a ban on processions. Nobody was allowed, there was no processions because in those days there was often protests and people would march and protest. So the government had put a ban on all protests. But somehow the devotee had got permission to put on Rati Atra. So Prabhupada asked the devotees, how did you do it? How did you get permission? So the devotee who was the one to get permission, he said, well Prabhupada, I went to the office of the city Munis the city government or municipal, whatever it is, who organize these things. And they asked me, what are you going to do? And they said, he said, we will have three hand-pulled carts. Three hand-pulled carts. So they had hand-pulled carts. They thought it must be some very small thing, you see because the impression is there, you're just pulling by hand, can't be, you know, they had no idea about the size. Of course, Rathiatra chariots are very big, they're like sometimes 40 feet high or more. <laughs> so he simply said, three hand pull carts. They said, oh, all right, no problem, and he stamped and they gave the permission. So Prabhupada laughed when he heard this. He said, and Prabhupada said, he said, yes, this is in our tradition. He said, just like Bali Maharaj, when he was approached by Lord Vamanadev, Lord Vaman Bali Maharaj asked Lord Vamanadev, what do you want? And Lord Vamanadev said, just three steps of land. Just three steps of land. So... <laughs> Bali Maharaj, oh, three steps of land, oh, no problem, yes. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, similarly, you have done the same thing by inaugurating Rati Atra. And Prabhupada personally organized the parade because at that time there was also Radha Damodar. The Radha Damodar devotees were traveling and they had many vehicles. They had buses, they had their own buses, and they had many vans and so on. So Prabhupada said, all of these things should go in the parade. Prabhupada said, not just the chariots, he said, I want all the vehicles, all the buses and all the vehicles which we drive, said, everything should go in the parade. It will look very impressive. So in this way Prabhupada personally organized the first parade down 5th Avenue. He said, he said just like on the, on the 1st of May, on May Day, that's like Labor Day or something. And so in countries like Russia, they will often parade, and China, they will parade all their military strength. They'll bring all their army and all their soldiers and weapons and everything and they'll pull it down the road, let everybody see the power of the nation. So in the same way Prabhupada wanted everyone to see the power of our Krishna consciousness movement. Let everyone see how we have so many vehicles, so many devotees, so many buses and how we're distributing this Krishna consciousness on a very large scale. So another nice festival which took place was in, in the UK, in London. And it's mentioned in the purport 
of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, just like uh, it, Manjil Lila, chapter 13, describes Lord Chaitanya dancing at Rathiatra, and it describes how the chariots are so big. So Prabhupada explains there, he said, in the same way, he said, we also have, we just had a very wonderful Rathiatra in the city of London. And he said, a, an article had come in the, in the London newspaper declaring that our Rathiatra festival was a challenge to Nelson's column. So in the center of London, where we had the festival, it's a place called Trafalgar Square. So Trafalgar Square, you know, it's a famous battle which took place between Britain and Spain and the British defeated Spain at the Battle of Trafalgar. So the, the admiral in charge of the fleet which won the battle was the Lord Nelson. And to honor him, they built a big column and on top of the column they put a statue of Admiral Nelson. So it's very big, it's very tall, but the newspaper article said that our Rathiatra chariot was a challenge to Nelson's column. And in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it describes that the chariots of Lord Jagannath, Lord Balaram and Subhadra, that they challenged Mount Meru. <laughs> you know, you know Mount Meru? Mount Meru is like huge, you know, it's just so many miles high. You know, the, the height of Mount Meru, it's, it's much greater than even the diameter of this planet. Our planet Earth is small compared to the height of Mount Meru. So in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it was describing how the chariot of Jagannath is a challenge to Mount Meru and Prabhupada said in the same way our, chari our chariot in London is challenging Nelson's column and this has been declared in the national newspaper there in London. It was a very nice festival uh, and Prabhupada was impressed that the devotees had spent so much money organizing the festival. They'd ha they organized a lot of prasadam and a lot of flowers, a lot of decoration and posters everywhere. So Prabhupada was really surprised because he knew usually when he would come to the UK with no money. <laughs> it was very difficult to do anything and with no money, we didn't. We never had money. We we were supporting the temple simply by distributing some few books on Sankirtan. So Prabhu, Prabhupada said, "Where did you get the money to do this?" And they explained that Prabhupada, the devotee who was in charge of the Rathiatra, Krishna arranged that he got an inheritance. His family was quite wealthy and one of his family members died and left him money and he used all the money for the Rathiatra festival and Prabhupada's response was money well spent Prabhupada liked to see us spend the money for the service of Krishna and he considered if we use the money to put on big festivals that is very good. It's a very good use of money. So these are some uh, memories I have about Rathi Atra. And uh, of course today is also disappearance day of two very important devotees. One is Shivananda Sen and the other is Swarup Damada Goswami. So Shivananda Sen was very active in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He had a residence here in Mayapur and he would regularly meet with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He became very devoted to Lord Chaitanya 
And every year after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, Shivananda Singh would bring all the devotees with him to go to Jagannath Puri. That meant walking for a few weeks. They'd bring all the devotees. Some of them were elderly and some ladies and some children. There would be a big party of devotees and Shivananda Sen would personally arrange. He would also cover all the expenses for everyone to go to Jagannath Puri. And we know he was such a kind-hearted person that on the way there, one time there was a dog following and Shivananda Sen arranged for the dog to also go with them and every day he would personally give the dog prasadam. However, one day he was not able to give the prasadam to the dog and then the dog went missing. Shivananda Sen felt very guilty that nobody had given the dog prasadam. He himself fasted because he thought nobody gave the dog prasadam, why should I take prasadam? He himself fasted. But then when they got to Jagannath Puri, they saw the dog was there with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was taking pieces of coconut pulp and throwing them to the dog and the dog was eating. So the dog was getting prasadam directly from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The next day nobody saw the dog again. The dog disappeared. It was liberated back to Godhead. So Shivananda Sen also had some sons and when he told Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that his wife was expecting a child, Lord Chaitanya said, you should name this child Puri. <laughs> Puri. It's an unusual name for a child. Anyway, Lord Chaitanya used to call the son as Puri. And uh, there's a pastime mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita how Lord Chaitanya told Puri, he said, recite, recite, ch or chant the holy name. And the boy would not do anything. Lord Chaitanya said, I have given the holy name to all the three worlds. I cannot get this one child to chant the holy name. But Swarup Damodar, who was there at the time, he said, no. He said, no, my Lord, the child has understood the name and he is chanting in his mind. So, sometime later, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Puri, he said, Puri, can you recite for us? Can you recite something? And at that time, at that moment, Puri spontaneously proposed, uh, pro, um, composed a beautiful Sanskrit poem describing the beauty of Lord Krishna standing on the banks of the Yamuna. So he was only a child at the time, but by the grace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he could describe, he could recite poetry glorifying Krishna. Uh, this boy later on grew up to be Kavi Karnapur. Kavi Karnapur, a famous uh, writer, he wrote beautiful, he, he wrote the, the Gora Ganadesh Dipika describing the names of the different devotees in Krishna Leela and how they appeared in Chaitanya Leela. And he also wrote the Chaitanya Chandra Doyanataka, a drama about the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he was a very great devotee. He was the son of Shivananda Sen. Shivananda Sen also showed his wonderful qualities. On one occasion when he was bringing all the devotees to Puri, he had to, he was delayed because he would take care of all the affairs at the different borders. They had to cross different checkpoints 
and he had to show papers and deal with different officials. So on one occasion the devotees were all delayed and they had not taken prasadam and there was no shelter, they had no, they had no rooms, they were just sitting out in the open in the hot sun. So Lord Nityananda got quite angry and at one point Lord Nityananda cursed, he, he cursed Shivananda Sain. He said, let, let Shivananda Sain's sons all die. And the wife of Shivananda Sain, when she heard Lord Nityananda curse her children to die in that way, she began to cry. And then later on, when her husband came back, he asked his wife, why are you crying? And she explained, Lord Nityananda has cursed our sons to die. And Shivananda Sain, Shivananda Sain said, if Lord Nityananda wants our sons to die, let them die. Don't cry. If Lord Nityananda wants them to die, let them die. And Lord Nityananda came there and he kicked Shivananda Sain. And how did Shivananda Sain respond to being kicked by Lord Nityananda? He said to Lord Nityananda, he said, Today I am very fortunate. I have been blessed with the dust of your lotus feet. He didn't feel any animosity at all. He, he said, this is the greatest mercy that you have allowed the dust of your lotus feet to touch my sinful body. And Shivananda Singh then made all arrangements to take care of the devotees and he arranged accommodation for Lord Nityananda and arranged their prasadam. So Shivananda Sen, he disappeared today on this day, Ratyatra day, and also Swarup Damodar Goswami, he also left the world today on this auspicious occasion of Ratyatra day. Swarup Damodar Goswami grew up here in Mayapur and then when Lord Chaitanya took sannyas at one point he also thought that he will also take sannyas and he went to Banaras with the idea of taking sannyas he stayed there for some time and then he came to Puri and he joined Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he never actually took sannyas but he was renounced throughout his whole life and he was one of the very very intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent most of his time with Ramananda Rai and Swarup Damodar Goswami. Ramananda Rai is said to be non-different from the Gopi Vishaka and Swarup Damodar is not different from the Gopi Lalita. And Swarup Damodar would be like the secretary of Lord Chaitanya. And anybody who would come with a drama or a poem or whatever who wants to read it to Lord Chaitanya, before they could read it to Lord Chaitanya, they would have to read it first to Swarup Damodar. And Swarup Damodar was very expert in the science of Ras. And if there were any Rasa Basa, if there was any mixing or overlapping of the mellows of Ras, then it would make Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very angry. So Swarup Damodar, he had the task of hearing all of the different poems and dramas, whatever was written, so many people, they would come to Puri and they wanted to read their writings to Lord Chaitanya. They would first of all have to read it to Swarup Damodar and he would check it and find out if it is suitable or not. So Swarup Damodar was very, very dear associate of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's a conversation which took place during the Ratiyatra. During the Ratiyatra festival, there's a ceremony called the Hera uh, Panchami festival. At that time, the goddess of fortune, 
comes out of the temple which is considered to be like Dwarka the main temple in Puri is considered to be like Dwarka and the goddess of fortune is coming because she's wondering where is Lord Jagannath gone why is he not come back yet it's so long so the goddess of fortune comes with all of her associates and they go down to the Gundicha temple and they arrest all the people there at Gundicha and they have them all bow down to the goddess of fortune so Narada Muni is none different from Srivas Thakur and Srivas Thakur was watching this ceremony and Narada Muni remember he's a resident of Vaikuntha and so they're very devoted to the goddess of fortune so when he saw the goddess of fortune how everybody was having to bow down to her and everyone was arrested by her associates Srivast Thakur said, Ah, oh, just look at the opulence of the goddess of fortune. But Swarup Damodar Goswami said, No, no. This, the, she's the goddess of fortune. You don't know the greatness of the lord of Vrindavan. Goloka, the lord of Goloka and Vaikya. Vrindavan you don't know the opulence of Vrindavan you're thinking the goddess of fortune is opulent but you don't know the opulence of Vrindavan that in Vrindavan where Lord Jagannath resides every tree is a desire tree every cow is a Kamadenu cow and every speck of dust is Chintamani. So, Vaikuntha can never compare to the opulence of Goloka, which is non different from Vrindavan in, on, on this earth. So, Vrindavan is such a place that it is completely transcendental and although it's so opulent the residents there are so pure-hearted souls that although the trees are Kalpa Briksha trees and can produce anything they never desire anything except fruit and flowers to offer to the Lord and although the cows are Kamadenu cows and can produce everything one could ever imagine, one could ever desire. The people of Vrindavan are so pure-hearted souls that they simply desire some milk so that they can offer to the Supreme Lord in their worship. So in this way, Swarup Damodar would describe the glories of Vrindavan and how it's greater than Vaikuntha. Swarup Damodar would regularly recite verses whenever Lord Chaitanya, whatever the mood of Lord Chaitanya would exhibit, Swarup Damodar would know what would be the appropriate verse and sometimes he would, they would sing songs. Lord Chaitanya also liked to hear the singing of Swarup Damodar. So he was such a wonderful devotee. He could understand the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when Lord Chaitanya would exhibit a particular mood, Swarup Damodar would be able to recite a verse which would enhance Lord Chaitanya's mood, which would only increase the ecstasy Lord Chaitanya would be feeling. So we cannot imagine just what a wonderful devotee this Swarup Damodar was. And of course he also kept a diary and it was his diary which helped so much to compose the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. That some of the different verses at the invocation they're taken 
from the notes of Swarup Damada Goswami. So we're very much indebted to these two personalities, Shivananda Singh and Swarup Damadar Goswami for their wonderful examples and their wonderful service to the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And on this day of their disappearance, we're remembering their activities and we're praying that we can also develop a little of the taste which they had. So we will stop here now and ask if there's any question or comments. Sometimes uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he has one article about Lord Jagannath and he describes how Jagannath is Krishna, Lord Balaram, he is Guru. Because Lord Balaram is Adi Guru, so he is also Guru. And, Mah and Subhadra, she represents Yoga Maya. So in this way we understand the three deities. Guru, Krishna and Krishna's Shakti. Krishna's Maya, Yoga Maya. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki, Ratiatra Mahotsava Ki, His Holiness Bhakti Vigdu Vinashak Nusingh Maharaj Ki. Let us all thank you for a wonderful class by loudly chanting three times. Haribo, Haribo, Haribo. Gaur Bhaktavinda Ki Jai.